Hello, Jungle Viewers. This is Evendian, welcoming you to Out of the Park Baseball 22 with the Pittsburgh Pirates. So, um, <clears throat> before we get going here, um, I wanted to, again, thank you all for the excellent comments. I really appreciate it. And I also wanted to point something out that may not be obvious to you if all you do is look at the numbers and don't look at the context. This scouting report by John Mazeliak would seem to indicate to us that Will Simpson's ability for contact has basically vanished overnight. Went from 64 to 57. And that's a pretty big dip. It's almost, it's almost a drop of 10, and that's something significant. But that doesn't appear down here. And if we look at our graphs here, it doesn't, doesn't appear down there either. Like it shows that it's leveling off a little bit, but it doesn't show this drastic drop. And so before I make any decisions about him, I'm going to ask my scout to look at him again. So, we went into last offseason wanting to fix a couple of holes and ended up making more holes, but for the right reasons. <clears throat> We've significantly upgraded our third base defense by playing Jordan Walker there and possibly getting a nice big bat too, although we're not too sure. We still keep our excellent hitter happy by putting him out in the outfield where he doesn't have a huge amount of experience, but he also won't hurt the team as much. We acquired a new second baseman to again further help out with our statistical, um, our, our issues there. And we didn't add a big bat because a big bat wasn't available. But I still think we're a better team now than we're, but we were last season. I feel that pretty strongly. Uh, somebody made a great point about maybe taking some of our depth pieces, something that was uh, Tom Lehman, about taking some of our depth pieces and trading them for bullpen help. I don't think we're there yet, but I think we're close. Um, I just don't want to sacrifice something in the long term for a short-term hit unless that short-term hit is likely to be truly beneficial to us and i'm not convinced right now that anything like that would be so we're gonna see what happens here um we're gonna let nate hyde show us if he can be a starter or we're gonna let mr matos here continue to develop in the minors and we're just gonna see what happens this season we're still an excellent team, and I think just like the last couple of seasons, all it's really going to take is just a tiny bit of luck, and we'll find ourselves uh, back in the playoffs again. Um, now, last season, we, of course, got swept, but, you know, if we'd won the bloody division last season, it wouldn't have been as big an issue. I keep getting messed up by this. I'm like, I don't remember winning a World Series. Oh, right, I just want to manage the the U.S. That's that's fine. Um, but we've came we came very very close to winning a World Series title in the past, and we're consistently in it every season. And that's one of the most important things to develop in OTP in a series like this, where it's not just about me winning something big. It's about consistent success year in and year out. So we're getting into the playoffs. We're not getting very deep all the time, but we're getting there. And we're maintaining a consistent level of success despite turning things over. <clears throat> oh, this is so cool. This is every transaction I've ever made as a GM. That is awesome including when I drafted people. Neat. I didn't know that was there. That was here. I wonder if that's a new thing. I don't know. 
But, so I'm happy with where we are. And I still think we're in the kind of situation where it's just going to take a couple of things going right and we could go deep into the playoffs. We do lack a true superstar. That is an undeniable fact. Garrett Gunnels is close, but I don't necessarily know that he is the dynamic superstar that we might want him to be. We also have a very large issue, which is that Cole Young is simply not the right shortstop for this team going forward. But we're going to hang on to him this season, hoping his bat rebounds a bit so that when we trade him in the offseason, we can get a better return for him. Right. I think that's all I wanted to talk about before we started sending games. Um, there's one other decision, and you may be asking, why do you start by looking at Will Simpson? Right now, there's very little reason to take Simpson over Goss. Because, while... Simpson is a mildly better contact hitter with a tiny bit more raw power. Goss has, by far, the better plate discipline. But as you can see here, yes, he's rated as a 66, but this is a great example of why you can't just stare at the overall number. Here's the numbers I'm staring at. 227. 217. 232, 249. This is not a man who hits for contact. And that severely reduces his value as a hitter. Now, when he does hit, the ball tends to go a very long way. And I mean, let's be honest, putting up a 2.2 war while hitting 217 is pretty damn impressive, but he's he's making the most of it. But because he's not a more consistent contact hitter, I don't know that I can trust him being a centerpiece of this offense. Especially when last season, his power kind of disappeared. So even though he looks like overall he's a 66, why wouldn't you start him? There's a reason why I'm not doing it. And the reason I'm not doing it is because I don't trust his recent past. Um, now, if something happens to Simpson, I've got a fantastic cheap replacement for him. Um, in fact, I'm going to get a scouting report on him too. If the scouting report comes back to that Simpson has indeed reduced his contact value, that significantly raises Goss's value. But that's why I'm not playing Goss right now. It's because... He just doesn't hit for contact, and without hitting for contact, he's more a very good fifth hitter than he is the cleanup guy that I want to be driving in baseballs. Um, so, yeah. All right. Um, I think we are good to get going here. Let's do it. Okay, so we first look at Goss and notice something very important just happened. Goss's contact is much worse now. Yeah, if his contact ability is only a 36, and Simpsons is a 64, this is kind of a no-brainer. And that's why scouting is important, right? <clears throat> I like Goss quite a bit. But if his contact rating is only a 35, he can't be trusted. 
So we're just going to go ahead and advance time a bit farther. Excellent. We claimed two relievers. that are quite a bit better than some of our others. So we're gonna go ahead and send Manning and Schuster. You're both gonna go to, oh no, not Manning. Schuster and Brown to the minors. Kalina and Santos up to the majors here. And this is the best way to improve your bullpen because I literally gave up nothing. Uh, and nothing is a very good thing to surrender, I think. Okay. Solis cleared waivers. He doesn't want to be demoted. Can I get any prospect for him? No. So here's the thing. I will eat his entire salary because it's not going to hurt us at all. I still have another $2 million. If I eat his entire salary and get a decent prospect out of it, it's worth it. Now, of course, for that to play out, I actually need to get a decent prospect, and I'm just not going to get that. Um, What if I look at regulars, too, just in case, and see if there is, like, a truly decent player here? Oh, my gosh. Look at this change. It tells you how they got their contract. Yeah, these are some crappy players, my dudes. Um, so that being said, I am going to send Albring back to the miners to keep working on being a starter. And we're going to use Solis as our as our emergency starter. Just because I don't want to trade him for nothing. And nothing is what I would get for him. Oh my goodness. That's a terrible start. How many pitches did you throw? Game log. 51 pitches, he just got utterly dominated. That's unfortunate. Okay. Man, all these pitchers are coming out of game super early. I wonder if this is... People being tired from spring training, maybe? That's weird, though, that all of our starting pitchers got chased out super early. They might have just, I mean, they were also pitching badly, so whatever, but. All right. Now, I'm going to start checking stats very closely every month so that we can make an informed decision about how players are doing and so that we can make the best decisions going forward. So we lost our center fielder for three months. Um, I'm fine with Greg Middleton being our center fielder as a defensive replacement. And yeah, let's go ahead and activate Caleb Hampton and make him our all-purpose backup outfielder. 
But I definitely want Middleton as uh, the starter there. And then I guess Kazono, you can get a chance to show that. And then Caleb Hampton is back up center. And then here and here. Middleton, Hampton, here. And here, and then everyone else here gets bumped up. Because I just don't expect much out of Middleton's bat. Um, this is about getting a great center fielder. And then once Jimenez is healthy again, we can bring him back. Why is a reliever leading us in wins? What is going on here? Um, some nice things happening there. There goes Kazono. Demuzio's declining quite badly, um, but that's not the end of the world. This I don't like. Um, this is him clearly declining at a very rapid rate because of the injury. Um, game, you're not doing that again, are you? Yes, you're here. He is the starter. Oh, well, that's cool. You can automatically bench someone when their fatigue reaches a certain level. That's cool. I like that. I think they've made some really great changes to the game that I'm just either never knows for or I'm just noticing it now. Um. No, you're giving me two bad players for a good player. He is a latecomer to this league, and he's having a great season, so hooray for us. Um, what's going on here? Hyde and Manoa are struggling, as is Tion. That's unfortunate. Bullpen looks good except for Manning. Now, the million-dollar question is, is he screwing up at what is essentially his job, or is he just not pitching well? Yeah, you're holding your own against lefties. It's righties that are the issue. So that's fine. That's just to be expected. All right. So a couple of things leap out to me as I'm looking at this lineup. First of all, we've got a whole lot of people starting the season off with a cold streak. And this is important, though. This is only a little over 100 at-bats, and that's not predictive of anybody's success. Um, I'm certainly not going to rush to bench Will Simpson, for instance, at this point, because I think he'll do better. And his track record indicates that he will. Same with Cole Young. Uh, these are both players that I could expect to do better. Caleb Demuzio, you might just be one of those players that just consistently underperforms your actual talent. And if that's the case, I want to find out nice and quick so that I can send you off to be someone else's problem. Because everything I'm looking at here tells me you should be one of the better letter left fielders in the majors, and you just haven't been. 
So I'm hoping that maybe that'll change a bit for you. <clears throat> Zion Rose randomly hitting 300 is not something I expected, but he's also not going to hit 26 triples. I'm pretty confident that that's not going to happen. So I'm definitely not going to make any dramatic decisions just based on his random ability to hit triples all of a sudden. But we don't have enough information. No one has more than about 100 at-bats, and I can cherry-pick 100 at-bats from anyone in Major League history and find you numbers that make them look like Babe Ruth and numbers that make them look like Mario Mendoza. It's not difficult. And so I'm not going to make any changes of anything yet. We're going to give it another month, and we're going to see how things look in June. Um... <clears throat> I mean, championships aren't won or lost in May. And what matters most is that we're still in a really good position. Uh, we're one of the better teams in the National League. People really want Dave Albring. But the thing is, they don't want him enough to give me something I'd want. Like, these are vaguely interesting players for a couple of different reasons. But not enough that I would give up Dave Albring. Like, the reason Albring is not in the majors is just because I want him to get experience in AAA. That's it. Um, and Garrett Gunnels is player of the week. That's pretty exciting. Ten homers? Already? Damn, son. All right, let's advance to the end of May, and then we'll see where we're at. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to part with Albring for mediocre returns. I don't have any reason to. All right, so far I'm a little concerned that we're already five games back. Manoa's not an RP, though. He's an SP. So stop telling me how his ratings as an RP are doing. Okay, this is what I was afraid of. We're starting, our scouts are starting to think that Simpson's decline is actually much more abrupt. Damn, Rene Vasquez. Hmm. All right. So here's the problem we face. Will Simpson is not the player he used to be. And if he's hitting this badly... Goss is the better choice because of Goss's superior plate discipline. Like, it's not even close. 
If I'm going to have a low average power hitter anyway, I might as well have one who also draws walks. Um, so we're just going to swap Goss and Simpson right now. And we're going to see how things go. Because this is now 200 at-bats. That's much closer to being statistically predictable. And I'm sure there's lots of indicators that indicate he's actually not as bad as he looks. Like, I'll bet his BABIP is probably in the toilet. Yeah. Hitters don't drop that far. But it's important to point out that Simpson has a, a, three, a 251 on base percentage. Goss has a 351, despite hitting arguably much worse. So we're going to give Goss his chance to show that he can hit well um, over the next month or so. And I think that's one big change that we're going to make. Where else can we change? Look, Jordan Walker is contributing enough with the bat that I'll, I'll accept his low batting average because he's here for his gloves as much, as much as he is for anything else. If he can give me quality defense at third base... And, and hit the ball with authority every now and again, I'm happy. So that's fine. And his predicted Zion Rose is not hitting 300 anymore, but he is hitting 500 slugging almost. So... Uh, so far, Kazano's looking like the best offseason move that I've made all season. Which is pretty great. Uh, Pitching-wise, the entire pitching staff is pitching badly. Which generally means one of two things. Either it's just a bad year, or there's something deeply wrong with the defense. This is leading me to believe that the defense is the issue. And I have a sneaking suspicion I know whose name is going to come up as being, the, being our problem. we look at my version of fielding stats because there's more data Cole Young is crippling this team <sighs> damn it And this is entirely on me. There's a very clear track record of him being a bad shortstop that I've just been ignoring. But he's been getting worse as he's aged. And Cole Young, bad shortstop, isn't as good. Sorry. Cole Young, amazing hitter, bad shortstop, is one thing. Cole Young... Okay hitter, bad shortstop, is another. He's making our entire pitching staff worse. And that completely neutralizes his actual relatively decent abilities with the bat. Um, so what could we do here? I could move him to third. He's got a really good arm. But the thing is, a 60 range isn't really going to play anywhere in the infield, except first base. And his bat's not going to carry him to being a first baseman. Damn it. Um, I was really hoping I didn't have to make the decision right now. But if we do not upgrade a shortstop, we can pretty much kiss a division title goodbye and possibly just flat out kiss the playoffs goodbye entirely. <clears throat> Which is obviously a bad thing. Now, I don't have any short stops that I would consider calling up, really. At least not as starters. Not as starters. 
I've got some decent defenders, but then again, I've got Gidry sitting here, who would definitely be a quality uh, shortstop defensively. I just want somebody who's not an offensive liability. Mike Burton is a reasonably good shortstop. Again, not a great hitter, but he's better than Gidry. He's got all these lovely intangibles. Burton's not a terrible idea. So we're going to trade Cole Young. And we're going to start by looking for prospects and regulars, I guess. And we'll see what kind of offers are being made to us. Uh, that's a big fat no, Trey Snyder. I am definitely not paying for a great shortstop when I have Gidry. Uh, you're just worse. Okay, Gofredo Romo is so far. Looking like a pretty damn tasty pitcher. Like, he's such a good pitcher that, yeah, you're winning right now, uh, Detroit. Let's see. Bobby West. You're just not appreciably better than Walker. So I'm going to pass on, on Westy there. Medellin is a great defender, but there's not much else to recommend him. I could get a couple of legendary relievers, potentially. All right, so this is mostly players that I'm not that interested in, as I predicted. But then there's a player I'm extremely interested in, Mr. Romo here. <clears throat> I wouldn't mind picking up another player. Just because I'm giving up Cole Young, right? I don't want to give him up for nothing. Could I get David Valdez too? No. Fair. I really like Stanford Pie. I wonder if I could get him. You just want a little bit more, huh? Yeah, the thing is that your idea of a little bit more is more than I'm willing to pay. So I'm gonna pass on Pie. I think I'm fine with this deal as is. But 
I do really like Stanford pie. No, I don't necessarily want to give up on Simpson yet. So what could I offer them in exchange? You want Jim Jacob? I'm going to submit this offer and we're going to see uh, if they take it. Okay, we are extremely close here. You can have a center fielder who can't field. Done. So, Mr. Romo, you give me an important ability which is sending Nate Hyde to the bullpen. He's too homer prone, and while that's fine in a reliever, it's not good enough as a starter. So yeah, we tried. Uh, I'm gonna put you back in the bullpen and make you like an important piece of that. And then Ben Manning, you're going back to the minors. I'm going to call it Mike Burden. And okay. So Romo is going to take over as our fourth starter. Um... Yeah, you're just worse as a starter. Um, that's just the truth of it. You're just worse. Uh, for right now, I'm going to make you uh, middle relief, long relief. And I'm going to convert you to being a full-time specialist who sometimes does middle relief work. Hmm. This is a number that I feel pretty confident is just a weird fluke and that he'll eventually get his stuff together, but we'll see. All right, so now we've fixed the lineup and here's our biggest issue. Who's gonna be the number two hitter? Who's gonna be the leadoff hitter rather? Is it gonna be Caleb Demuzio? And I think the answer is yes. I think that was an easier question than I would given myself credit for. Rose in front of Walker. Middleton goes there. And then Mike Burden is going to start playing shortstop. And batting ninth for us. This offers a significant upgrade defensively. And he's got really good range. So I'm hoping that he will be a top quality uh, addition to the team. Guzman there, Kazono there, Rose there. I have to change his name though. I have to give him a nickname. I am sworn to carry your, there we go. 
And Mike, if you're a real Major League player and that's not actually your nickname, I think you should consider it. I know Guidry's a better shortstop, but his bat is at least interesting enough that I want to give him a shot to see how he does. Um, but it's also beyond dispute that Guidry would be the better shortstop. I'm just not quite willing to compromise as much on offense if there's a chance that we can have a nice little bounce back season here. So we'll see how Burton does. Maybe he'll be great and maybe he'll be terrible, but we're at least going to give him a shot. Um, plus, I just like having Gidry as a super sub. I think he's better suited to that role. All right, uh, we are done, my friends. It is time to see how this experiment works out. I'm a little, I do have misgivings about trading Cole Young, but the truth of the matter was, I was gonna probably trade him in the off season. He's a fragile player. And he's not a very good shortstop. And those things combined mean I'm not as upset about it. Fantastic. Now that Ruben Gonzalez is in the major leagues, we're sure to win 100 championships. That's unfortunate for Goss. Um, he was actually carving a very nice role for himself. We've also lost Kalina for some indeterminate length of time. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to play a man short so that I can just slide Jimenez right in. And maybe Simpsons... Banishment to the bench will encourage him to hit better. Okay. Off the leg into the left field of Doug Rader. Oh, Jerry Coleman. I'm not a Padres fan. I don't know he's actually that bad, but there's always entertaining, entertaining things about him in the draft. Anything interesting here? Manoa's declining pretty hard. We might have to think about replacing him in the rotation. But I've got plenty of candidates to do that, so I'm not rushing on that. Because, oh, no. You're going to cost me so much money, Gunnels, um, but I kind of don't mind. Look at Matos putting more together. That's encouraging. You're going to be the one I can't afford, aren't you? You're going to be the one that finally prices yourself out of me being able to keep you. Oh, well, we'll figure something out in the off season. Did I skip the draft? Oh, the draft hasn't happened yet. Okay, good. I feel better now. Um, okay. 
I have $7 million. There are certainly worse things I can do with my money. Then buy a quality international free agent. I will happily select one Andre Sevilla. I think he'd be a perfect candidate for the future for us. Uh, let's look at stats. Will Simpson's got 13 homers but can't hit. Um, which is a bit disappointing. Mike Burton's off to a decent start though. I think getting Jimenez back is going to help a lot, somewhat surprisingly. Uh, not that Greg Middleton has been bad, but that Jimenez is just an all-around really good player. Who still has more than enough, I think, to offer us both offensively and defensively. That I'm not ready to give up on him yet. So we'll, he'll probably get his job back, and that'll help out a lot. I see that we're still giving up home runs at an alarming rate. But the defensive efficiency used to be 10th, and now we're up to 7th. So definitely good things are happening there. Um, all right. Our starter's ERA is, is pretty gross still, but... Can I really blame Romo too much? Do I need to just give him a chance to show what he can actually do? I think maybe yes. I think Romo needs a bit more of a chance. Uh, he's been productive in the past. And we'll see how that works out for us. So we're just going to talk the Sim up to the All-Star game because it's going to stop before them with Jimenez. He's undecided, but he's happy because I've done well historically, which I think is very fair. How is our staff chemistry? It's pretty bad. It's more we don't have anyone who gets along well with everyone than we have coaches that get along badly with everyone. Um, I think we let Brock walk because he's actually not that important. And that'll let us promote somebody else or hire someone else. That's maybe easy going. Like Kieran Madison. He'd be a good choice, I think. Um, my contract is coming up too. I'm thinking I'll get extended, but who knows? I definitely want to bring you back. Uh, Buck Britton is a pretty decent hitting coach. Unless Mons is like, oh gosh, Mons is redonkulous. Okay. Then we're actually are gonna to try to promote Mons. So he needs to get resigned.
Uh, Kevin Hooper is is pretty ex, ex, exceptional as a hitting coach. We can re-sign him and move him up the system. Mr. Sean said, LeChuck, I think you are overdue for a promotion. So we might move you up the the major the minor league ladder. I'm just gonna offer everyone else an extension unless they refuse it. Because when we get to the lower levels, I just, I don't care enough to mess with it. Okay, done. All right, that's coach assorted. Um, let me have a look and see how the team is doing now. It's doing the same as it was like three seconds ago. Come on, Abby. Would you please just let me play until my damn center fielder comes back? Thank you. All right. So you get called up. And Jimenez, you're going to instantly be put right back in the lineup. No hesitation. Hampton goes there. Middleton goes here and here. Um, and then I'm going to have Walker and Jimenez hit above Rosenberg. I think that makes sense. So again, Jimenez comes back. Middleton. Middleton. Hampton, uh, boop, boop, and set. And we're going to sim up to the draft. I don't get why so many people are so eager for Dave Albring. Like, he's a good pitcher, and I'm definitely going to give him uh, a spot in the lineup. Hooray. Or a spot in the rotation at some point. But I don't see why everyone's like, oh my god, our lives are incomplete if we don't have Dave Albring. And they don't offer me something that's worth me keeping him. Okay, Matos is crushing it in the minors. And we definitely need at least one starter besides Manoa, who's not extremely vulnerable to home runs. Burr is fine. I like him. And I'm not going to send him down. So we've got a couple questions here. First of all, is there anyone who's obviously no longer worthy of keeping on the roster? Yeah, it's Aguilar. If I can get rid of you, 
and replace you with Matos, I think we're just better off. Now, will absolutely anybody give me anything for him? That's the better question, and I bet the answer to that is no. And that's the risk you take whenever you spend someone, pay someone as much money as we're paying Aguilar. So I'm not that bothered by it. Um, what if I eat 15% of his salary? And now I'm actually getting some legitimately interesting prospects. Kevin Sturm, I like the cut of your jib. I wonder if I can do it for no money. You want Jamie Vaughn? You can have Jamie Vaughn. Uh, Sherrington, I'm going to try to get them to throw in some other people now that I'm giving up actual talent, but I'm happy with this deal as it is because it does two very important things. Number one, it gets rid of his gigantic contract. Didn't seem so bad at the time, but eventually something has to give, and the fact that he just gives up home runs like they're going out of style is not a great look for us. He's been productive. I'm not upset with him at all, but we have better players that need the opportunities. Um... Oof, that's not happening. That's certainly not happening. Let's see if the White Sox like that deal. I don't want the fourth round pick that badly. Done. Oh my freaking God. Oh my, I'm such an idiot. If I'd taken two seconds, I would have realized, oh my gosh. I am such a dipshit. I'm not that upset by it. We have like Whitney, for instance, who I think will be just fine. Oh, and we're going to lose Manoa, too? All right, this is about to get interesting. And I just lost him. Boy, I sure wish I still had Alex Aguilar. I guess it's all bring time. Well, I certainly did not expect to completely turn over most of my rotation over the span of a week, but here you here we are. And it's time to draft. And 
we're going to auto pick until I get to pick and we'll see who is left. All players. All right, Josh Cage. So here's what concerns me about Mr. Cage here. Why hasn't he improved his defense? I'm not saying I won't draft him, but I'm deeply concerned about his inability to improve his defense. But then again, there's Chris Cunningham who can't hit. Um, he is from Harvard. I'm kind of liking Josh Cage anyway. Just because his battle play anywhere, and if we give him some reps in the minors and he figures out what position he he he's, he's best suited for, he's even a pretty decent, he's not a terrible outfielder. So I think we take Cage and see how he develops. Plus he's nice and cheap. Um, really good raw tools for Mr. Rivera here. Let's do it. Yeah, I'm not going to take you. Yeah, these are some bad players at this point, my friends. Yeah, this draft got bad in a hurry. I guess I'll take Josh Thiel. When Rostro keeps slipping, I'm going to take him. I'll take a risk on Bailey here in the fourth round and see how much that'll cost me. I'll take Art Quave. Even though his nickname is Cannibal, which makes me somewhat uneasy. And I'll take Mike Evans too, why not? And we've reached the point in the draft where I frankly can't be bothered anymore. Um, this is just not a great draft. Um... I just hope the issue isn't that my scouting budget got cut, but no, it didn't. It's $24 million. Who from Pittsburgh made the All-Star team? Uh, Tian did. Robert, Robert Colina did. Kaito Kazuno made it. And Garrett Gunnels made it. None of those names are too surprising. But I guess I'm a little surprised that Kalina is pitching so well, especially after we just grabbed him. It's Cy Nielsen. He's doing well in San Francisco. I'm I'm so happy for you. But I'm not happy to have paid you $8 million. So, yeah. Who makes it from my prospects? Chris Messer does, and that's it. That's fine. All right, friends. I'm not convinced any of these will be necessarily amazing players, but I think some of them will be good enough that I'm I'm okay with that. I'll happily pay you 40 grand.
Josiah, I will pay you your 500000 I won't like it, but I'll do it. All right, you want more than $8 million. That's not going to happen, dude. You can happily go back to college, and I don't care. All right, let's see how things progress. Why do I want your old terrible relief pitcher? What about him am I supposed to be intrigued by? No, I'm not giving up Van Sant or Vasquez. I'm just not convinced we need a starter that badly. <sighs> really, game? I'm going to go ahead and sit tight. And when what's his face uh, is healthy, we'll put Goss on the roster and we'll figure out what to do from there. Yeah, I don't want your terrible players. Please stop offering them to me. So we're going to do Middleton, back and center. And Hampton. Yeah, Goss is still, I think, the better player between him and Simpson. So I think we'll, we'll give him his job back. Just stop offering me these awful players. I don't know what it is about him you think I want, but... Nope. Okay, so we get JJ Goss back. Um, I've seen enough to know that I'd rather have Goss playing uh, first every day than Simpson. Simpson is a useful bat off the bench and a good backup, but he's he's not a starter at this point in his career. Um, so who do we want to trade? So... A guy like Colina might get a decent return, but I'm not that worried by it. Um, I'd love to lock up Gunnels, but that's not going to happen. I don't think Jordan Walker is worth $10 million. That's for sure. Um, but we'll see what happens with him. There's no one I can obviously trade to save money, which I could then give to Gunnels. Demencio doesn't want very much money. That's nice to hear. 
And look, I can easily free up money by just cutting back on a couple of things. So I'm not that bothered by that. I can't trade Manoa because he's hurt. Um... Yeah, I don't think there's anyone I feel particularly motivated to trade right now. I think most of my players are either inexpensive or just, you know, not that important. How do I have no money for next season? Is it just because my player budget is so high? Or my scouting and development budget so high? Maybe. Now, is there anyone I could acquire that would increase our chances of winning this season? That is an interesting question. And a veteran starter does make some sense. Because right now, it's one guy who was a starter last season and a bunch who weren't. I would love to get you on my team. And I can apparently get him for next to nothing. Um, done. I can't remember the last time I made a deal that was just so obviously good. Um... So Whitney has had very few starts in triple in the majors. I'm going to send him back to triple A for more work. And our newbie here will take over as the third starter for the rest of the season. I think that'll be good. I need to get Gonzalez out of the closer role. I have neglected this, but unlike previous seasons, I am catching it. It's just taking me a longer, uh, taking me a bit longer. Gregory Santos, I choose you to be our closer. Uh, you're getting demoted to regular middle relief. And I want you to use Manny Rosales more often. And let's see how that changes things for us. Yeah, everyone's home run rate has shot up this season. That's a little strange. Whatever. Um, yeah, and then we're going to see how this works out for the rest of the season. All right, let's do it. Spencer Torkelson is a silly name. Uh, in the off chance that Spencer Torkelson actually watches this channel, you know I'm right, dude. Man, apparently being injured is the best thing that ever happened to J.J. Matos. But yeah, we're not going to get him back for a while. You're quite an intriguing third base prospect, Mr. Bradshaw. Quite intriguing.
Really, game? Really? Okay, Cubs, I need you to back off, please. Way off. Okay. Mike, you're not helping yourself. I mean, there's there's no question that you're better than Young would have been, but your only calling card is being a better hitter than Gidry. And I guess that's still true, but I could still do better potentially at shortstop. Brooks is a better second baseman. I can't use Brandon Anderson because he's hurt. Mike Sheehan's got really good range. Um, do we give him a shot? I'll tell you what, Mikey. Uh, I'm going to make you my starting shortstop. And Burden's going to be there. Because you're a better shortstop than, um, I think you're a better shortstop than Burden. I don't know. Bear, we're going to give it a shot and see if your superior range, even if your arm isn't great, makes you a solid shortstop. We'll see what happens. Um, and then I do have one more roster spot I can use. Matos is back. Um, look, I'm going to go ahead and let Matos, uh, actually. Let's go to a six-man rotation for the rest of the season. But definitely bump Matos up in the rankings. And then we are going to let Albring start. He's just going to start um, as the third starter. There we go. Look, Santos has only been the closer for a month, and he's already got 12 saves. I think that's gone a long way to, to seeing us be more successful in the short term here. I turned over a lot of starters this season. I didn't expect that. But it was the right time to move on from some of the more expensive players, I think. Meh. It's not that bad.
That hurts. Um, I actually had a lot of... Kazono's been really great for us. And him spraining his knee right now is just the worst possible timing. Uh, okay. Who the heck would I even get to play second? Deemers isn't ready. Oh, uh, that's for sure. He's also not a very good second baseman. Um. Shit. This is some really terrible timing. Because I think even the next man up that I was going to consider... Yeah, was Brooks. Because he's a great second baseman. Um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to send him ahead two days and we're going to call up Brooks. And I know he'll be injured for another week. I just want him to be ready. And then I guess uh, Gidry. And then... I have literally nobody that I trust to hit second. So I guess I might as well be... I might as well be Gidry. Because someone's got to do it. Actually, you know what? Um... Where is the noob? Where'd he go? Okay, he just vanished. I just called him up. I put him on the roster. It wasn't Burton. It wasn't Sheehan. What the heck? Am I losing my mind? Oh, Michael Brooks. Yeah, I just... Yeah, there you go, dude. That's what I was going for. I'll tell you what. Brooksy isn't actually a, the worst choice for the two-hole. Uh, he's not a great choice, but he's not the worst choice. And then that'll be fine. Um, let's go ahead and keep going. Kazono makes me sad. That was my one free agent acquisition that really, really worked out. So was Goss. I think we could argue that Goss turned out to be okay. Um, I wish he hadn't gotten the playing time the way that he did. Because I really, really hoped that we'd get a great season out of... Um, out of Simpson. Um, but yeah, it's looking like it might be Van Sant time as soon as next season. Um, at least that's the possibility. We've already clinched the division title, which is great news, obviously. Um, Dave Albring is, is looking good. I don't know how we're the best team in the National League. Um, I didn't expect it. I'm going to take it. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, now, I'm going to be a lot more careful about my, my pitching rotation here. Ooh, he led the league in wins. Well done, Tian. All right. Pitching. I think we do four-man rotation. And... This is going to look like this. Um, I'm going to leave you off the... Oh, I can't do that without... Waving you? That's unfortunate.
Oh, this does unfortunately mean that Burden has to be the shortstop and Gidry has to be the second baseman. I don't really like either of those things, but it's what we're stuck with because of roster rules and injuries. Um, so what's my rotation order going to be? I think it's going to be Tian, Matos, Albring, and Burr. And then you're both going to slot in as emergency starters and long relievers. And critically, we did... Um, we did win the division title this season, and that means that uh, we get ourselves a reprieve. All right. And then I'm going to take the pitch count off. And you're just going to pitch as hard as you possibly can because it's the playoffs and YOLO. Uh, and... That's a terrible start. It's not because you didn't throw enough pitches. You just got beat pretty badly. Um, okay. Not a great look. Um, yeah, if you had... Gavin Guidry, hitter of one home run in the entire season. Also, it's a home run in the playoffs. Um, I would like you to buy some lottery tickets for me, maybe. Uh, now, Albring got lit up. Albring did okay. It was actually Kitch or Critch that got pitched badly okay and yeah why did you pull burr so quickly like i get it, they gave up three runs in the first inning but that's not a reason to just pull him Well, that was unfortunate. I mean, none of the starters were very good. And right, that's going to be an issue whenever you have a team like ours that's very untested. We didn't really have quality veteran starters other than Tian. And by veteran, I mean he's 24. Um, yeah, we're going to have to see what happens uh, going forward because, like, again, Matos wasn't great but wasn't terrible. And, again, he got pulled super early. Oh, he got hurt. Okay. That's unfortunate. Albring did fine, not great, but fine, and then the bullpen just melted down for reasons that aren't entirely clear to me. Like, it's not entirely the pitching staff's fault, but the bullpen really was just not good. Like, okay, Garrett Gunnels hitting subpar certainly didn't help but we could have been a lot more competitive this season i think um especially as uh, especially as allegedly the best team in the national league haha -ha, astros you made me root for the yankees i hate you that much 
Um, yeah, it was. This was a peculiar, uh, a, a peculiar postseason. And maybe we do just need to start, like, devoting some more significant resources to bullpens. I'll be curious to see how the starters do too, because, like I said, we went from having a pretty experienced rotation to one with a lot of rookies to be quite honest with you wow thanks kazono fine please stop bothering me man the yankees won gross Super gross. Gunnels at the National League in OPS. That's pretty exciting. Okay. Another none of you are that exciting. Uh, Jimenez is going to come back. I have... You've been consistent. What? Man, whatever. We'll, we'll hire some folks here in a second. All right. So let's recap. How did this season turn out? Well, Garrett Gunnels played at an MVP level. Maybe not pure MVP... But it is safe to say that putting him in right field is one of the smart decisions that I made all season. Uh, he took to it like a duck to water, and he had the best offensive year of his career. No complaints whatsoever. Mr. Kazono here was our first posting. And I gotta say, we definitely chose to do it at the right time. Because you were phenomenal and a key part to our success early in the season. Zion Rose had a little bounce back season. Jordan Walker was fine. Demuzio was okay, I think. Goss was all right. Will Simpson hurt the team. That's a real shame. Greg Middleton turned out to be useful. He might have just kept getting, kept getting hurt, so there's not much you can do about that. Pitching-wise, this was very clearly a year in transition for most of the pitching staff. Um, consider... Our, so Tian is the battle-hardened veteran, having pitched two seasons. Lejeune Diakoudis, I think, will get better when we give him a full season of reps next year. Albring, first year in the majors. Romo, eh, could have been better. Burr. He was fine. I can do better. Move on. And then Matos uh, really provided a lot of talent, and I think he's going to be an important part of this team. Um, this is just a straight-up weird season where the bullpen ended up being a weakness down the stretch. The Nate Hyde experiment as a starter was just a mistake, and I think we're just going to keep him in the pen from now on. And then I'm not sure how to feel about a rotation. I certainly wouldn't mind another starter that we can count on. But maybe we just need to just give our, our pitchers room to grow and see what they can accomplish. But another season is concluded. I hope you enjoyed the episode, and until next time, this has been Avindian. Thank you for watching, and I bid you good day.